Hello, Anashe. I would like to show you today my nature hall. When I say nature hall, it means this is those are plants and things that I got from nature, which I would be using in my medicinal and magical concoctions. Now, the wonderful thing about this is that I didn't spend any money, and also that uh, in a sense it's like you, you spend all your money on this and you pay no money on this because I worship the gods of the plants and I give them offerings so worshiping you know and making offerings and having like a festival for Osani in the plant world in voodoo is like you know it costs money but you know as soon as you do this you get the plants and they retain a lot of magical energy there are shades available for me to shape now this is you know they might seem a bit withered because they are two days old okay but this is the basket of the herbs that i've gotten so let me show you what i've gotten and how i'm using them this is white fennel i picked some leaves of uh, white fennel as you notice it i have like i have a handful here i don't have much and fennel is a good moony herb it's a subconscious herb and it's also a very maternal herb. It helps young mothers to uh, operate as a mother and take their pain away. It takes the suffering of having to sacrifice yourself so much for having children. So it's a good plant to have. And it also gives you a protection from authority, a protection from the law. So I'm drying it. You know, this is basically would be what I would be using for the next three years until it, I need it. And... It smells ma marvelous. It smells like anise and freshness. Okay, so that's one. I got a small blossom of uh, rue from my garden. And this is a sun herb. It's a very empowering herb and protective herb. And I usually buy my rue because I get the rue seeds, you know, the rue uh, fruit pods already dried in the Ethiopian market. They use it as a spice and as, an, and as a cheese making thing. But, you know, since I grow some in my garden, drying it gives, means that uh, the plant herb that is grateful for me taking care of it, it will give it some extra power. So I would be keeping this first blossom safe for like real emergencies. Okay, I got some purple clover. And this is good for people who has a urinary tract problems. You know, and also this is uh, also a good luck plant. Use it to summon luck, like the four leaf clover. But you know, it's just a normal clover. It's still lucky though, and also it's sacred to Maman Brigid, so it can help me in like curing diseases that needs to eliminate toxins from the body. This is a bunch of wild chamomile related plant called Kochvan. I don't even know how it's called in English. But again, another sunny plant. It's very good for charisma. It does everything that chamomile does. Like it's good for sleep. It's good for reinforcing the immune system. It's also very good in protection. I got a bunch of rosemary from my garden. Again, I, I can buy dried rosemary and I can do whatever I want with it, but, you know, since I've raised it, it has all the power in of, of like, you know, of my garden and me ta taking care of this plant for years now. Also, uh, rosemary is like, I think, Voodoo's first help of purifying. It's very Martian fire thing. It will burn ev everything that is bad in you. So it's good for protection, it's good to create barriers, and it's good to cleanse people. And I've seen, like, we do see people take it and make limpi out of it by basically brushing this against their body. So I'm drying it. This is hyssop. This is Israeli hyssop. It makes the spice zatar. And it's a very holy herb. Uh, the ancient Hebrewites used it to smell the blood of the sacrifice over their uh, doorstep so uh, the plagues the egyptian plagues wouldn't kill them so it's a very good protection thing it's a very good ancestral thing for me to use in protective magic in general and also it has uh, aphrodisiac powers it's it's known to have powerful aphrodisiac powers so it's good for love spells 
I got some blackthorn for my visit in uh, the autumn forest. I can use the needles for stabbing things and you know it's also a protective and it can be used for hexing. And sage is now blossoming and blossoming sage is the best sage for tea and other things. Sage, not many people talk about this but it's a good forgetting herb. It's like when you have an argument or a fight and you want people to forget what it was about and move on or when you have a trauma to heal you basically you can go to sage you know you can use the sage as a purifier and a smudge stick and just tell it that you want to make something make bygones be bygones and it's really since it has like all those peaceful attributes and healing attributes it really helps you to um, let bygones be bygones and, and let people forget things that you know you need them forgetting also it can be used for male malevolent magic you can use it to make people like you know forget stuff that they need to remember and that you know and cause some mischief with it okay so that's my hair basket and you know isn't that pretty don't you think it's beautiful i really think it's beautiful okay now and of course, after they dry, I will remove them from the stalk. I will burn the parts of them that I don't need as an offering and as a thank you. And when they're absolutely sure, I will put them in jars and in bags. And, you know, use them as I need to. Okay, in here, I have some grapefruit flowers that I'm drying. Because now the, the grapefruit are blossoming. And when you dry them, dry them like this, they still maintain some of their beautiful citrus scent. And one of the leaves from the orchid that I'm raising. Now, orchid is a very royal plant. It gives you control and power. And also, you know, it's a very good thing to protect your position in life to have orchids around you. Okay? And also, it's a very good part in, like, when you want to banish something or bury something. Look how flexible it is. I can write a petition over it. I can roll this. And I can bury it in the cemetery. And use it for, like, you know, dismissal. Now, grapefruit is also, it's, you know, did you know that grapefruit essential oil is one of those oils that are safe to use while one, one is pregnant? Again, it's a very maternal, watery plant. It's also, the fruit itself is a very moon thing. It's moon-shaped fruit. And it has this very delicate effervescence about this. So I can use this to manipulate dreams and make love charms and put people together and to give elegance and beauty to things that require it. So I'm drying them. And as you see, it's like just a small handful because I want the plant to be able to bear fruits. I also kept the leaves of the grapefruit and I'm drying them. I just put them in this bag and I roll it to the sleeve backwards like this. And I keep it open on a desk or like, you know, even on the floor. And every few days I turn the leaves around, I touch them. I, I'm even singing them a small song for preservation, you know. So the essential oils and the magical powers will remain in this. Now, another thing that I've gotten is cyclamen. Those are cyclamen flowers. And cyclamen is a protected plant in Israel. Those are from a, a friend spot. They started to die. So I basically picked them up. And cyclamens are very aphrodisiac. Uh, they can, the, the root might be very poisonous, but the root can also be used as a sort of a medical soap. And also, it's a memory herb. This can fuck up with somebody's memories. And many older women, you know, women that has passed their prime but are still looking for love, are using uh, cyclamen essential oils in their love perfume to make them more attractive, to help them forget the disappointment of the past and put a brave face to the future. This is the sort of flower. And last and not least, rose petals. Red rose petals. Oh, I dropped some. Well, I'll pick them up later. And you know, I don't need to tell you that roses are good for love. All roses are good for love, but red roses, they are good for lust for love. And those, this is a scented rose. This is not like one of those roses 
that you pick in the roast in the flower shop nowadays that doesn't have a scent and basically like you know uh, it looks like a wax flower those are real roses and they were growing in a cemetery and by taking them from the cemetery they get like that they have by the way those have a scent but this is not a sweet scent those they are very peppery those are peppery roses and what's good about them is the fact that you know you can use them for all sorts of things but um the fact that they are stolen from somewhere public gives them give them an extra kick because a, a red rose is a flower of eshu and eshu is a trickster and he loves it when you do this harmless grabbing when you can you know when you're using your nature around you to change things so i picked some and I'm drying them in the bag in the same technique I told you about before. Now, I've used previous roses from that bushes in the past and I ran out because they were so good. I stopped using... I stopped using all, uh, all those store-bought roses. I'm just buying and using the ones that I've got to make this. And the fact that they're coming from the cemetery, that makes them bar so many. That makes them something that is good in diplomacy. It good in, it's good in opening the gate. And it's also good in like doing love spells where uh, the person requesting the love spell is a man. Okay, so this is my help haul. And this is what I do during the springtime. This is part of the way in which I celebrate Ostara with the goddess Eoster. And also, you know, I recognize that in Israel, the spring, like the autumn, is like a two weeks season. So I, I quickly pick the flowers that I can before everything dries and dies. And then the god of the sun, Shemesh, and the god of death, Shepesh, will ride their chariot and turn the, the verdant green into a skeleton of goldenness. Okay, so this is uh, my herb hole that cost me nothing. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it gave you inspiration. Goodbye and share.